combining transformations with dilations, lesson 10.3a. When creating an animation, the figures need to be translated, reflected, rotated, and sometimes dilated. The artist moves the character slightly for each frame. When doing a sequence of transformations, it's very important to write the ordered pairs for each vertex carefully. Each transformation is applied to the ordered pairs of the previous transformation, not the original figure. So that means for each step we do, the next transformation only uses the previous one's ordered pairs. So here we have a sequence of transformations, and we can apply this sequence of transformations to the blue rectangle. We see the first one says that for the x and y values, it'll map to x plus 6, y minus 1. Well, because of the plus 6 and the minus 1 being applied to the x and y values, we know that's a translation. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I'm going to have a link to 9.4a where we learned about translations in the description. So we mark down all of the ordered pairs for the vertices for this blue rectangle. I've got a mark down here. And we apply the plus 6 minus 1 to the x and y values. And we know that we are going to plot this translation to here as our number 1, as our first transformation. These are the ordered pairs we draw it. Now we're going to use these ordered pairs for one for our next transformation. Now as you're doing all these transformations in this sequence, it may get confusing which ordered pair goes to which vertex. If you want to mark A, B, C, D, and A prime, B prime, D prime, C prime, and so on with the tick marks, that's okay. We have our second transformation, and it's saying the xy values are going to map to x negative y. Well, that's a reflection, and that video, 9.4b, will be linked in the description also if you need a refresher. We're going to apply multiplying negative 1 to every y value from this first green rectangle. We do, and we get the ordered pairs for the second transformation, we draw the rectangle, number 2, and we use its ordered pairs for the next transformation. So this was a reflection. It actually reflected across this x-axis to here. That's what this is. It's a reflection across the x-axis. If it were a reflection across the y-axis, we would have had negative x and then y. Because we see this negative y, we know it reflected across x. The third transformation in the sequence, number 3, was a 90 degree rotation around the origin. This is a positive number. It's not negative 90 degrees. It's positive 90 degrees, so we know it's clockwise. If you don't remember about rotations, that video, 9.4c, is also linked in the description. We take the ordered pairs from number 2, rectangle down here, and apply this y, negative x, remember we have to switch them, we apply that to the ordered pairs for this previous transformation. We're going to multiply all the x values by negative 1, we're going to list the y values, but we're going to swap places with them so that the y is now the new x, and this x is now the new y. We get our ordered pairs for our third transformation of that clockwise 90 degree rotation. It puts us here. We plot the points, we connect with line segments, and we know that number three rectangle is here. We draw it, and now we use its ordered pairs for the next transformation. For our fourth transformation in the sequence, it's telling us the x and y values are going to map to x plus 8, y minus 2. Because we've got a plus 8 and a y minus 2 here, we know it's a translation. We know it's going to slide somewhere. We take the ordered pairs from our third transformation, and we have them written here. 
we know that these are the x values, these are the y values, and we're going to add 8 to every x value, and we're going to subtract 2 from every y value, and we get the ordered pairs for our fourth transformation, our translation. We plot them, connect the vertices with line segments, we draw the rectangle number 4 and use its ordered pairs for the final transformation. For the final transformation in the sequence, number 5, it's telling us that the x and y values are going to map to 2x, 2y. Well, we know that's a dilation. We're enlarging the figure. We're multiplying it by 2 for each x and y value. We take the ordered pairs from the previous number 4 rectangle, and we're going to multiply each x value by 2 and each y value by 2. We get all the ordered pairs for our fifth final rectangle. We draw rectangle number 5 and the blue rectangle translated to number 1, then it reflected across the x-axis to number 2, then it rotated 90 degrees to number 3, then it translated to the yellow number 4, and then it dilated to double in size as the sequence of transformations. For a pre-image and final image to be congruent, the size and shape must be preserved. A pre-image and its dilated image will have the same angle measures, but the sizes will be different. They won't be congruent. This one has a side of 2. If we had a dilation with k factor 2, we would multiply this and get 4. And if this side were 3, we'd multiply it by that k factor 2 and get a 6. They're not congruent. They may have the same angle measures, but they're not the same size. We're finished with the first part. We're moving on to the last part, transformations, similar figures. It's not unreasonable to forget the rules of the x and y for translations or what we do for a reflection across the x-axis or y-axis or what the rules are for rotations. The best thing to do is to go back to 9.4 a, b, and c and look at the rules that I have written or you can look in your textbook if you're following along in the same textbook for GoMath and inside the cover of your notebook you can write a little box with those rules and that'll help you because then you can refer to it whenever you need it. Have a wonderful day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye!